Welcome back to the Getting Started with OpenScope MZ video series. I'm Sam Kristoff from Digiland, and in this video, I'll introduce you to cursors and math. I'll start by clicking my OpenScope MZ in Waveforms Live to set it as the active device and visit the instrument panel. I'll turn on my function generator, which is connected to my oscilloscope, and click single to get some data on the screen. Then at the bottom side of the screen, I'll click the cursors button to view the cursors menu. You can choose a type, disabled, time, track, and voltage. I'll choose time. For each cursor, you can choose the oscilloscope channel that you'd like to attach the cursor to. Since I'm only looking at oscilloscope channel one, I'll leave it attached to that. Time cursors are vertical cursors that can pan along the x-axis, the time axis. In the bottom, we can see information about both cursors. Cursor one is positioned at 198.2 microseconds, and the value at that point is 1.515 volts. We can see similar information for cursor two. We can see that the X delta between the two cursors, so it's at 991 microseconds, and then one over delta X, which is our frequency, 1.009 kilohertz. If I click cursors, and instead of time, I'll choose voltage. These are horizontal cursors that I can drag along the voltage axis. If I place one at the bottom of my signal, the other at the top, we can look at the cursor values in the lower right and see that the delta Y is three volts. That makes sense because my sine wave has a three volt peak to peak value. Finally, I'll change from voltage to track. This has both X and Y cursors and as I move one, its corresponding cursor moves with it. Again, I can see current values for each cursor and delta X and delta Y values in the lower right. I'll switch the cursors back to disabled to move them off the screen. Now let's look at the math functions. In the lower left, I'll click math. And first I can pick a channel since only channel one is enabled. That's my only option here. But if I had channel two enabled, I could choose that as well. And I can see different values like frequency, amplitude, maximum, mean, the period, peak to peak value, minimum, and RMS. If I click any of these values, they'll be added to the math section on the bottom of the screen. Every time that I acquire a new buffer, these values will be updated. So let's change to a two kilohertz sine wave. Re-enable the wave gen. And let's turn on channel two. And that hits single. Now you can see my frequency and amplitude have been updated. And if I go back into the math menu, I can choose channel two and add its frequency and amplitude. Math and cursors make it easy to analyze your data in Waveforms Live.